When I woke up in my condo in the morning and I seen the same view but different shades of sunrises, I used to stand there with my coffee and look out the window and imagine how amazing I can make this day. Even though they started out the same every morning that I woke up. Now that I'm in the van, it feels like I'm starting a brand new life every day in a new place. Good morning little guy. How are you this morning? We are in Drumheller, Alberta, and this morning we're gonna go into the Dinosaur Museum. This place is really cool. Nowadays, I don't have to stand there at my front window and think about creative ways to make my life interesting. Because living in a van is interesting every day. Every day is like a crazy life experience and you look forward to waking up. Today, we're going to experience some dinosaur stuff and I don't know anything about dinosaurs because as a kid, I was more into playing with Hot Wheels cars. This stuff is kind of scary. This place is super impressive and it's awesome because when you're looking at all of these bones and skeletons, it actually tells you which ones are the originals and which ones are a cast of the originals that they found. And right on the bottom corner of all the plates is the origin on where they found these things. And it's crazy to see that a lot of this stuff is from right here in Alberta. This one's an original and it's from Dumphy, Alberta. Whatever the heck that is, is another original. This one's from Manitoba. You guys can read that because I sure as heck can't. <laughs> this is an original. Right here. Found in Dinosaur Provincial Park, Alberta. That is insane. Look at the teeth on that thing. Wow. And this huge one there. What is that thing? Is that a T-Rex? That thing's crazy huge. That's a T-Rex. The Black Beauty. The T-Rex. This is an original. An original from Crow's Nest Pass, Alberta. This is like a real T-Rex. Insane that this was in Crow's Nest Pass, Alberta. That thing is massive, dude. This is so wild. This place gives you shivers a little bit, man. I can just feel it inside of me, my little shivers. Wow. This one's another original. This one was found in Sandy Point, Alberta. Oh, this fossil is beautiful. Look at the shine to it. Wow. It's an original found in Lethbridge, Alberta. And this here is an active lab where they're actually going through rock and pulling out fossils and bones. And there's somebody in there working right now. Wow, look at. Wow. Oh my gosh, that thing is wicked. What is this thing? These are the remains of the best preserved armored dinosaur in the world. They don't have the entire thing, but they have a chunk of it. And what looks like what they've done is they've made a metal skeleton of what the rest of it would have looked like if they found all of it. And that's an original. 
Here's a remake of its head so you could touch it. These are so crazy, dude. Wow. This place is cool, man. I don't remember this stuff the last time I was here. I'll have to go back and look at that video, but I don't remember any of this cool. <laughs> it's fun. Well, this is a dark room. The glass floor, whoa. Welcome to a world that existed half a billion years ago below the surface of the Cambrian seas. These animals are among the first complex creatures to appear in the fossil record. Most of them would have fit into the palm of your hand. Here they are reconstructed at 12 times their actual size. In the midst of concealing sponges looms the large predator Anomalocaris. Its prey, the primitive crustacean Canadaspis, swims desperately to avoid capture in the spiked claws. Above, with three tail fins and big eyes, swims Odoria too large to worry about being attacked. Descending to the surface of the seafloor beneath you, a school of Morella, the most common of the shale's creatures, is diverted by the larger trilobite, Olenoides. Nearby, the carnivorous worm, Luisella, telescopes from its burrow to threaten the cone-shelled bottom dweller, Haplofrentis. Because I was never into this stuff as a child, I don't know what any of this stuff is. So experiencing this stuff as an adult is a pretty wild thing. To imagine that these things used to swim in our oceans and also <laughs> used to roam around the earth. It's crazy, because down here on this floor really puts into perspective how big these things were. And how scary it was, imagine being a human walking around with these things. That's insane. I feel like a little kid down here. It is super impressive in size in here. This building does not look this ginormous from the outside. And I love hearing the kids over there getting super stoked about seeing all the dinosaur bones. You should see them all just like this. Hold on, I'm kind of being the same way. The size of the head on that ceratop. It's massive. That's what that is, right? The sir top? That's right. <laughs> they say this all started 230 million years ago. When I was a young child, I thought that's how old my grandma was. Heck, I thought that's how old my mom was <laughs> when I was little. But I found a little bit of peace in here today as I read some of the signs on what these things are. And I, I found a bit of peace knowing that not all of them were predators. Some of them just used to eat vegetation and stuff, making me totally safe to roam. And we think running into coyotes is scary. Imagine that. Wow. Just the tail of that is like way above my head. This thing is so big. <laughs> wow. The size of that T-Rex. Oh, so crazy. This in a perspective. Right. Like, it's like way up there. <laughs> That's a wild shot. Right down the rib line. these crazy things. What the heck? As 
that what a no pooping sign would look like if dinosaurs still roamed? <laughs> if we had a pet dinosaur, that would be the signs you see around all the parks. Instead of being a dog park, it'd be like, <laughs> no dinosaur pooping. Oh, this is gonna be a bad idea. Step here to see which Earth's organisms weigh as much as you do. This is gonna be embarrassing. Really? I weigh as much as a harbor seal? Thanks a damn lot. Thanks a lot. Going into the Dinosaur Museum this morning was so worth it. Now we're downtown Drumheller, Alberta, and I believe this is the world's largest T-Rex statue. <laughs> Holy, that thing is insane, dude. <laughs> that is so big. Let me walk over here and put it into perspective against my van. Does my van look so tiny? Against the big, the big T-Rex. You can hear voices coming from inside of his mouth. Did he eat people? <laughs> Did he eat people? No, there's actually a lookout up there. Um, I don't really feel like paying for it to get that view. But yeah, you climb up the belly of the T-Rex and you can get a good view over Drumheller. That thing is awesome. More dinosaurs. Whoa, he's gonna eat the kid. <laughs> Just pulling in here to see the hoodoos. What's a hoodoo? <laughs> Do you guys know what a hoodoo is? Those are hoodoos. This is pretty cool. They have these little things built here, so if you need to take a picture of yourself, you prop your phone up here. This is smart thinking. The hoodoos are sandstone rock formations carved out, I don't know, who knows how long ago. If you want more detailed information on stuff like this, just Google it. At least there you're gonna get the facts. It's really cool that you can just walk around all over these things. Because when you look at these structures from a distance, they look a little bit fragile. They're not. That is like seriously rock hard. But when you see them all piled up, you're like scared to touch them because you don't want them to like crumble or break, but that's like solid rock. It's nuts because this just looks like sand, like a pile of sand. It feels like sand. That stuff's like rock hard. This whole day has made me feel like a kid and also been another day of education and learning. Like I said in a video the other day, I'm learning more out here on the road than ever before. <laughs> this is fun. So amazing. That goes all the way through. Whoa. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Okay, let's go squeeze through here. Oh. Can I make it? Okay. I don't think I'm gonna make it through here. I need to stop eating tacos. <laughs> oh. I'm a, I'm a little wedged in here. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. I, uh, clearly you'll never be the guy that does caving. <laughs> or if I do, it'll be in the big wide caves. Cause, uh, I'm not making it through that crack. <laughs> That's way too damn thin. This area of Drumheller, Alberta, AKA the Alberta Badlands, is pretty badass. <laughs> Come on, any town that looks like there used to be like the wild, wild west back in the day, you know, bow and arrows and and, uh, and cowboys and stuff, and a place where they found so many dinosaur bones, 
Yo, this place is certified badass. Yep, you heard that right. And I tell you, man, if you're the kind of person that likes to make a bucket list of places that you need to explore before your time expires, this is definitely the place to be. Right here in the heart of the Canadian Badlands. Breaking a sweat up here. You know I'll never be a mountain climber, right? You know I'm never gonna be doing like these crazy summits. <laughs> no, I can't even make it through a small little crevice, crevasse, however you pronounce it. Ah, <sighs> I have my workout for the day. Thankfully, I left Mr. Cruzy Bear right back there in the van. Um, and yes, I could see the van the entire time. He is right there. Uh, this is right along the side of the highway, believe it or not. See, parking lot, main highway, the hoodoos one incredible place it amazes me that as far as i travel from coast to coast in canada over these last few years it amazes me that you get to places that are like is this is this really canada for real <laughs> growing up as a kid i always seen this kind of stuff in country and western movies which were like way down in colorado places like that I never imagined that you'd see these places right here in the country that I was born and raised in. Canada, you amaze me every day. The Hoodoos, Drumheller, Alberta. Definitely another one of those ones you wanna put on your check mark of places to go travel. I had a good day. Before living in my van, life really felt like I was on a treadmill. I'd wake up in the morning and try to find a creative way to make my day interesting, but the more and more I moved on that treadmill of life, the more it was just the same of the same of the same every day. But having the ability to be out here on the road makes for a whole new life every single day. So if you get the chance to get out here on the road, even if it's just six months out of your entire life, it'll change your life, that's for damn sure. So get out and have some fun. Go buy yourself a van. Trust me, you won't regret it. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Okay, guys, see you soon.